of um, you know stolen property. Um, get your position established with your paperwork and and pursue it that way. I've Does that make that. sense? Hmm? Yes. Yes. I've yeah. done that. You've done that. Yes. And just, and and uh, if you've done that and they still haven't uh, released your children back into your care? No, no. Okay, what state are you in? Colorado. Colorado. Okay. Um, all right, so... Uh, and, and you've got a public record proving that you are um, a general executor and, and guardian. You've got something that they've recognised that you are? No, no, no. I, I, I'm working on that. Well, that's the issue. That's if, the issue. if you haven't got a public record in their system that is indisputable that you are the general executor and guardian and general guardian, until you get that, they're not going to move. Once you've got that and you've got your compensation of fees set out, then you can move. But until then, you can't move on this stuff. You're really uh, giving them ammunition that allows them to continue, okay? Does a public record is a filing of the lien? The public re filing of a lien, um, well, the public record is is, um, is is their system, but I, I would not be, as I said, I would not be pursuing the UCC angle that you're, you're thinking of at the moment. I would be trying to perfect a instrument that is on the public record of proof that you are the general executor and general guardian. And the best document for that would be uh, your will and testament recorded. Would you agree? Will and testament, yes. yes. Right. So I, I would be steer clear, I'd be steering clear of any of that kind of let me put a lien on them because uh, they're not going to move. Once you have a public record proving that you are who you are, then they've got a problem. But until then, they're going to ignore you, aren't they? Yes. Right. Okay. And then, look, once you've got that on the record, then you can move against them in terms of um, um, filing a, uh, basically filing a, 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 a um, an order against them because they're public servants. But, they're not recognising you and they're not recognising you have any rights. They're claiming those rights for themselves, yeah? Well, I filed an order, a non-judicial order. Yeah, but it's, it's still they're not recognising... Look, they, they, they're seeing you as, as some crazy person, right? They, they're not recognising that you are a general executive of your state or guardian of your state at all. They believe they have all the power. And Colorado is infamous for this, yeah? Yes. So you need to get your record on the public record clear first and steer clear of any kind of threats against them. Don't make threats. Executives do not make threats. Executives do, okay? But in this case, a lien is a threat in this case, right? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's a threat. I think it's a tit for tat. Uh, they took my kids uh, and I... I, I okay. I, I, so I, I wish you well with that and I look forward that the documents on the site can help you. Yes, But I will. think I've said it enough now. I've made it as clear as possible my opinion of what you would steer clear of. But I understand... Well, I can't, I, I can't know how much pain you would be in, but I, I understand your anger... And I understand the trial that they put you through. But I just hope that you, um, as much as you can, uh, be resolute and be very, very clear that you've got to get your position established first before you move on these things or they will jump on you as they have jumped on other people. Uh, okay, we'll work on that. All right. Thank you. Best Thank of luck, Swanda. Best of luck. Bye-bye. Um, so that was a very difficult subject, and uh, I, I do feel it's a very, very hard subject uh, when they have taken uh, 
children away. But we've got to get our position right on the record first before we do any of those things. Uh, otherwise, uh, they unleash um, their image trained people and, and they put people away and they've done it over and over and over again. We're going to get to the next caller and, uh, and then we'll keep going. Hello, Lynn. Can you hear us? Hi, Frank. It's Lynn. Um, Hi. I, I want to caution the caller that you were just cautioning. Um, I, I did some things in Colorado without the standing of being in the office of the general executor. In fact, I didn't know anything about it. This was several years ago. They did not hesitate to come after me with filing spurious liens on public officials. And ultimately, my husband and I ended up in prison over the whole issue. And you are playing with fire if you play with that and you don't put yourself in the proper standing. You've got the tools now that we didn't have several years ago. You've got the tools to come in and and do your uh, your proper steps for being establishing that you are in the office of the general executor. Don't get in a hurry to do it. Get it done. Get it done right. If it takes you a couple of extra weeks, it's already been five years. Do not touch the UCC. You are going to be poking a grizzly bear in the eye with a toothpick and you're way too close to the grizzly bear, and you are going to get slapped around and hurt. I don't know how much more emphatic I can be, but I, well, I hope you get the message. <laughs> I think it's black and white, Lynn. Look, I, and I know you're passionate because you and your husband were, were you know, tortured by the whole process. Uh, so I think you are able to speak from first-hand experience. I Absolutely, just, I just, and, and from yeah. first-hand experience in Colorado. Now, the, there yes. is an upside to all of this. When you get your um, executor documentation done, and I have to say, I was held back uh, where I am now from recording it in a public record, but I sent, um, I had been informed months ago that there was going to be a levy on a social security check by IRS and I had sent everything in and that process stopped. Well then um, about six weeks ago a computer, this is completely automated, not even an individual, an IRS computer in Austin informed me I was going to be levied and it would be coming out of this month's check. Well I had my uh, information on being the executor. I had the deed poll. I had um, I used a rejection notice. I sent their document back to them on the back of the rejection notice. I gave them a certain amount of time. Um, and you had mentioned this when you were talking about the affirmation with someone and I just said if no re written correspondence is received by you within 14 consecutive days from the time then our office shall conclude that you made a mistake and no foreign further correspondence or mistakes will be made by IRS. Okay, the the whole point of all of this is today my check came and there was no lien. Mm -hmm. So um, when you take the time, even if their system says, no, we're not going to let you uh, record it in our county record, you go ahead and you move on because you know who you are. You know you've done what you need to do, and you stand in that position. And once you've got that general executor, office of the general executor, and you know who you are, Frank has said it on this call. You are the power. It isn't the paper that's the power. It's you, the power, knowing who you are. Okay, that's what amen, I have. To amen say. to that, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> and right now, we need some gospel singers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely, Lynn. Thank you so much. I just love the passion, and it's real, and and it's because we care, and I really do care. I really do care when I hear about people who have suffered one of the very worst injustices to have their children taken from them 
you know, I've never stopped. I, and I, there was a fellow in Canada who, who, you know, I said, look, please, he was so passionate. And I said, please don't write to me. He kept writing to me. I said, please don't write to me. And he would, you know, he still would come and he'd still say all sorts of things. But I never stopped looking at, at trying to see how we could find an answer to the question of children, the minor. And it is in being the general guardian. You're the general executor. You are also the general guardian. That means you are the guardian of any minors of that estate. Uh, it's taken a long time to get here. But all that good work is blown out the window if you allow them to press your buttons. Yeah? That's absolutely right. And the other thing I would say, and you said it also tonight, um, if you don't have the money, that doesn't mean you sit home and sit on your hands and feel sorry for yourself. All right, if, if we're now uh, challenged in our checkbook, then we go cut firewood in the forest, all right? And we bring it, bring it in. So tonight, we're unloading firewood at one door, and my son is bringing an elk in the other door. And we're yep. Yeah, we keep we keep we keep living. We don't we don't uh, let them win by basically rolling up in a ball and saying, I, "I can do nothing." Lynn, thank you so much for everything you're doing, and I know people really appreciate the um, uh, synopsis that you do and uh, and all the help and thought that you do. Thanks, Lynn. I think we lost Lynn then, but uh, good on her. She's fantastic. Uh, got a question here just in the chat. What's the difference between with prejudice and without prejudice? The word um, prejudice uh, comes from uh, uh, Latin uh, prejudicium, uh, meaning injustice. Um, and uh, another word is very similar, uh, prejudicum, which is probably more likely uh, its origin, which means prior judgment, uh, pre being before, judicum being judgment. So technically, from my understanding, is when you ask for something uh, to be uh, dismissed with prejudice, uh, it means that effectively you're asking the matter to be dismissed without any ability for it to be resurrected because of some prior right, some um, uh, legal uh, claim. But if you uh, ask for something uh, without prejudice, then you are reserving the right to claim through a legal right uh, to uh, return. So the assumption is if a case is dismissed and you don't nominate with prejudice, then you leave yourself open for them to resurrect the case six weeks, six months, or six years down the road. That is my understanding. It's very broad, but it's very brushed. If I've made a mistake, then look, people, please let me know. But that is my uh, comprehension of uh, prejudice from prey judicial prey judicium or judicium uh, from, uh, from Latin. Uh, I see Ron's up and we're going to speak to Ron uh, and please, if there's any other questions, let us know in the chat. Uh, Ron, we'll just get on to Ron here. Ron, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. Hi. Hey, I wanted to give a special message to Swanda. As you know, my criminal case is over liens properly filed liens, but then they created a law, made it, an, made it an illegal act, and each count is worth 10 years in the federal slammer. And I don't think Swanda wants to go to jail. So, please don't do any UCC, any commercial liens, anything. If you need help, you can contact me on my email. I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. I'm, I'm well, kind of tired and I have a little bit of time. Well, very honorable of you, Ron, and I think your, your first-hand experience on liens and Lynn's first-hand experience also in uh, the same situation and in Colorado uh, is, is good advice. But as I'm sure you appreciate, when the, when the subject is the kidnapping of your children, you're dealing with hot buttons that oh, yeah. I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how I would hold it together if yep. I had children and the state took those children from me, I really don't know how I'd react. And I could talk to the cows come home about being level-headed, but it would be a horrific event. So for her to hold it together in the last five years is extraordinary. Yep. 
but I do hope that she follows your 